Hi, I'm Steve Window. I'm the Anglican Cyber Safety Support Officer. My job is here with the Anglican Schools Commission looking after cyber safety. I'd like to give a snapshot of cyber safety of the current environment our school students uh, are actually in. One in three young people aged between 16 to 19 will be victims of image-based abuse. And that demographic changes for 20 to 29, one in four. This was, a, this was our outlined in a study by the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology and it was published middle last year. This demographic changes to all Australians being one in five just due to the way eight different age groups are using information technology. Image-based abuse, it's commonly known as revenge pornography. The Office of the ESAC Commissioner in May last year released information that bullying, cyberbullying, had increased 60% over 12 months. The ESAC Commissioner herself, Julian Amman Grant, had said we were 10 years behind in cyber safety. There are other statistics saying children 7 in 10 will be bullied online. This is where our students at our schools exist. And if we look at a study produced in the middle of last year by the Burnett Institute, which is a credible study looking at when children actively start looking at pornography, it's 13, year, 13 years of age for boys and 16 years old for girls. Another startling statistic is 80% of young men view pornography weekly and three quarters of girls monthly. This, of course, is startling to us. And nearly 50% of children aged between 9 and 16 experience regular exposure to sexual images. That information came from a, a study from the Australian Institute of Family Studies produced in December last year. So we can see the environment our children is very confronting, especially for children who haven't yet developed the emotional capabilities and mental capabilities to deal with it. To deal with it. Now, the World Health Organization's draft on the 11th International Classification of Diseases is listing video game addiction as a possible mental health disorder. There is no treatment plans associated with this at this time. It is only included in the draft list for discussion. But how does that affect us? Well, the average time a student, a child, should have per day over, over seven is no more than two hours. The Australian Institute of Family Studies produced a uh, documentation after conducting their own research that the average Australian 12 to 13 year old is spending 4.3 hours. So that's 2.3, that's more than 50%, double I should say. It's more than double what our children should be exposed to. But we as educators can take a bit of a sigh of relief that two hours a day maximum does not include educational purposes. So what we do at school with education with online and devices is not included in that two hours list. But children are being exposed and unsupervised more than twice the amount of time online than they should be. We all know that the Royal Commission's final report and recommendations was released last year. Recommendation 619 to 624 deal specifically with the online environment. And this is what here in cyber safety across the Anglican schools is which I'm actively attending to. I like to provide that picture to say, okay, this is the state of events. This is the current what's happening in the world. In 2017, cyber safety in the Anglican schools, we created cyber safety champions at each of the schools. Two cyber safety champions come from every school. We all get together in what we call the Cyber Safety and Champion Network, which is to build a community of practice across all the schools to increase our professional standards and capabilities in dealing with cyber safety issues. 
as a product of that, we've looked at making and provided guidance for making cyber safety committees at each school. This is in line with the East Safety Commissioner's Office in having a cyber safety contact and actually having a committee to deal with cyber safety issues. The missing link in relation to cyber safety committees and the champions is actually how they work. So we got together and we created terms of reference for how these cyber safety committees can work at school. And this was presented at a, a cyber safety champion meeting. We then developed, and this is through participation and feedback from meetings, developed a cyber safety plan by term for the schools across 2018. This is and can be contextualised for each individual school. It's including relevant parts which are in the Royal Commission's recommendations, parental engagement, staff training, student engagement, developing and including a framework within our, our school policies. We also developed a Cyberbyte school resource which is produced every term. Comes out at the uh, Cyber Safety Champion meetings and that contains a whole heap of online references. Yes, it can be printed out. I have seen that being presented in the schools, laminated and put up around the schools, but also distributed online where all the active links to relevant information, such as the Year Safety Commissioner, Kids Helpline, reach out. I've also developed for the schools and us at the Anglican Schools Commission, Parent Aid One. Parent Aid program is a lecture and information session followed up by a Q&A session afterwards at a later date. The aid stands for application internet device educate and engage your child and provides parents not only with the snapshot of the dangers which we must be aware of and emerging issues but actually how we can meaningly start taking control and that is by what can we do with each application, how are we managing the internet how are we managing the devices? And then looking at strategies, how we can educate not only our children but ourselves, and then some strategies, how we can engage them. Final part in 2017, we've created a strategic vision, which are the four E's of cyber safety. The four E's are your environment. That includes your school framework, your school network, and also includes the home environment. Your education strategies, your engagement strategies and your enforcement. Enforcement is really consistency, auditing and reviewing. And at the middle of where each of these four E's sits, if you, if you can picture each one as a circle, in the middle of that circle sits cyber safety. And if one of those circles is deficient, our capa capabilities and capacity to deal with cyber issues can be reduced. So the 4E strategic division helps demystify and provides a simple and effective method to explain the online world and what we can do. In 2018, we've continued. We've now have released Cyber Safety Update 1. There was just a PowerPoint presentation went out as a quick, a quick update and as well as Cyber Safety Update PD for staff. And that is Staff Aid 1. And during that presentation, actually linking the routine activity theory of criminology and our policies and procedures at school and how they are really important and connect to anti-grooming strategies, anti-cyberbullying strategies. And considering that cyber safety is actually student protection online. We've also released on Internet, Safer Internet Day, the Anglican Schools website, the Anglican Schools Cyber Safety and Wellbeing, Anglican Seesaw. This website contains a lot of wealth of information across all different sectors of our community. We have a cyber safety blog containing information about what's happening at the schools in relation to cyber safety, as well as information and events, a cyber safety forum restricted forum for our champions so we can share and develop our community of practice and we can build the level and our capabilities to deal with cyber 
related issues. We have a staff section so we can develop and release lesson plans and connect them to the best staff resources that are available online. We also have a calendar of events for every month of the year and this even includes such as returning to school and looking at uh, updating our home internet agreements and our consent, uh, consent forms at the school. We have a parent section for information to assist parents as well as access to an online uh, safe internet training portal. We also have a student section and where we can place and connect students to the eSafety Commissioner. Kids Helpline, information from Reach Out and eHeadspace assisting our students reach the best possible resources available online. That's 2018 to date. We have coming up for our primary schools a joint session with the eSafety Commissioner on bullying, the National Day of Action on the 16th of March, and where our young students will be able to take part in the virtual classrooms and all link together with the eSafety Commissioner. What comes next in 2018, we'll look at cyber, cyber safety reporting online across all our schools and how we can link that to resources and student protection resources at each school and to provide a voice and a capability for our students, staff and parents to take action. We're also looking at parent aid too and when we keep developing the online capabilities of our parents in developing what they can do, how they can act positively online, what can they uh, uh, engage their children even further with. We're going to look at our cyber safety policy and the cyber safety resp policies response guides and how we handle digital reputation management. The cyber safety policy has been a work in progress. We're trying to change culture and acceptance across our schools. Cyber safety pol policy will have some of the functions that we've already discussed. The champions, the committees, the network, cyber safety plan for each year, but then we'll have guidelines in relation to standards for filtering and monitoring, our digital representation management to assist teachers, inclusions of how we actually relate to each other online, and inclusions for what type of con context we can use for mobile devices and smart devices and reporting mechanisms. Guidelines, is, we've already done so much in relation to reporting. As I've said, the mechanisms already, already exist. Cyber safety online is just student protection online. So we're good at reporting. How do we use those, in, those methods to report online? The guidelines will be focusing on that. But also what comes beforehand in first response processing those reports and making a plan and following up on how we respond afterwards. So in planning 2018 and beyond, we'll also be looking towards moving into virtual classrooms and responding with cyber safety teach, uh, sessions for teachers and providing online virtual classrooms for device management and account handling. And understanding that we're not police, but there is a minimum that we should be, at, should be doing, and also preserving each device for any investigation that takes part, but making sure we don't overstep our boundaries. There's a possibility which I would like to explore further is the introduction of student digital leaders across schools. The eSafety Commissioner advised me last week in a meeting that they are about to release a, a program for digital student leaders for schools. Student digital leaders projects uh, have taken off in the United Kingdom as a method of a way of creating further ownership. We've been following the, the Royal Commission recommendations. We've been looking at changing culture. We've been looking at changing staff's capabilities, changing and providing assistance to parents. But what comes next is start changing the culture and start how students will use information technology and how they can use information technology positively. We've already run a couple of student aid sessions at the schools and these will be further rolled out to other schools instead of responding to a case and responding to an incident. 
we've also been discussing relates to having cyber safety summit across all our schools coming together for our students and discussing the issues such as a TEDx and looking further towards the possibility of gaining accreditation as a, as a service provider with the eSafety Commissioner. So for me, if you need to contact me, Steve Windows Cyber Safety Support, please contact me at swindow at anglicanchurchsq.org.au. And my phone number is 3835 226. I really thank you for your time in listening to this and understand that cyber safety is a community issue. And from that, and from what we're trying to achieve, we're trying to have a realistic community response. I thank you for your time.